So if I understand, it's like a war between the force of your desire to the force of my desire and the force of his desire and so on. Meaning what happens with us in life is a result, is a war between the, the mental forces of a person, as you said. Yes, that's all there is. That's all there is. Okay. So when, when we speak in the wisdom of Kabbalah about angels and the Sidul prayer book, it also speaks about angels. Yeah, yeah, good angel, bad angel. Yeah, they sing on Shabbat, these, those. Yes, these are forces that appear inside the system of connections between us. How do I identify them? What are these forces? These are the good or bad forces. Can you explain a bit? No? I don't know what else to add. Let's let's put it this way. Kabbalah believes that there are angels. Kabbalah doesn't believe anything. It discovers these forces. They exist in nature. Uh, like you discover different forces, uh, like uh, the forces of uh, an atom, the forces of... Uh, I don't know, of uh, the rain, of uh, whatever forces exist. All in all, what we study in science are different forces. Okay, so what, so what forces are these? An angel is called a force. There is an angel that pulls everything in the air to earth. So earth has this force that pulls whatever is in the air to pull down, to fall down upon it. You mean gravity. Yeah, gravity, that's an angel. It's a force. The mental forces you mentioned earlier are also angels, or there's something else? They're the forces in the still vegetative inanimate, both corporeal and also spiritual. They're called angels. From the words malchut, uh, which is a uh, special force in the wisdom of Kabbalah. Whereas the forces which are above the angels, these are the forces of the Adam, of the man, who is above the... Meaning the mental forces of a person, yes, they are above the angels. He can change everything. If, if it's an Adam, if he works on it, if he develops himself to be uh, above this, say, can I... Can I arrange for myself a good angel to protect me? Yes. How? By starting to change in a good relation towards others. So you'll operate good angels to be around you. And for you, this will be a, as a protection shield. And how can I... How can I um, be in touch with these angels. These are your forces. There's, um, don't have to be in any kind of contact with them. These are your forces. It's when you build, instead of your evil forces, natural forces, meaning each one of us comes from the shattering, from the sin of the tree of knowledge. Each one of us has 613 corrupted desires, meaning only in his own favor. If a person arranges these desires as much as he can to the, to the extent which he can, as much as they should be better. We don't know 613 desires. We don't know our 613 egoistic desires. We, we, can't, we can't count them. We can, but all in all, we can start by the wisdom of Kabbalah. We have to learn how to relate to all of them in a good, nice way. And then, and then, by that I start changing reality. What is reality? I start feeling, and what a beautiful world, like a paradise I live in. I don't have to die in order to move to heaven. This is completely, it has nothing to do with my, with my body, with my flesh. What does it have to do with to move to heaven? It has to do with, do I build? Do I build this heaven for me? I can build a heaven for myself? Yes. 
It has to do with those good angels that I build? Yes. That all your evil egoistic forces, you turn them into the stole, into giving. If you take all the forces that you have and you turn them into forces of the stole, not to harm others, to behave nicely, and even not to give out to everyone, but to simply be good, neutral towards others. You already rise to the degree of heaven. In the wisdom of Kabbalah, that's called the degree of Bina, Chafetz Chesed. Don't want anything from anyone and don't want to harm anyone or anything. Meaning the first the first step toward heaven is not to want to harm anyone. Yes. Okay, I understand about the story with the angels. And what's more important is that I understand that the good angels, I can build them, I can create them myself for myself. Yes, because you have bad angels and you turn them into good angels. Who are my bad angels? All of your forces. All of your forces. Please explain. I mean that you're full of desires, thoughts, and your desires and thoughts, uh, the more they come up in you and they change, you have to keep yourself from inverting them from bad to good. Uh, when you measure this good and bad, it's towards others? Yes, towards others. Meaning, so all the aspirations I have that that benefit, that make things better for me on account of others, those are evil angels, yes. So I have to catch them and tame them to be good angels, good forces. Yeah, but it's not something that you can do with your hands. You have to learn how to do it by the higher force. It's impossible. It's possible only in a special uh, group, the group of angels, and by working with the light, with the higher force, that changes um, everything from bad to good. Okay, I have an additional question. I understood the question with the angels. What about... Uh, there, are, uh, there are demons and spirits and the wisdom of Kabbalah. What is that? It's the same. Angels uh, come by uh, different names. Uh, an angel is a general name, good or bad, from the word malach, from the word malchut. So they have different kinds of, uh, how to say, kinds, levels of angels and um different ways they, they operate accordingly their name. Okay, I understand. These are different categories. Okay, now, when we say that there are people or there were people in history, special people in history, that could make the spirits do things and invite angels, uh, to me, a person that's not exactly engaged in these things, it looks like manipulating these forces that they have the ability to influence the system. You say that there are different positive and negative forces in the system, and it says that there are people who have the ability to control the system. Today, as well, you can find a person that if you'll start listening to him, he will influence you and can bring you to different impressions from him. He can threaten you. Um, uh, he can he can scare you. In short, you're you're influenced by him. It's all in all forces that we're inside this system of forces that we're interconnected in. Therefore, there are such people with a very powerful force that simply influences. How does it influence? Any, any teacher at school, how does he influence small children? He influences them. He can intimidate them. He can calm them down. He can do things. It depends on the different levels. To which extent can he psychologically do it? It's all in all psychology. Kabbalah, it's uh, the continuity of materialistic psychology. Wait a second. Previously you told me, look, Oren, don't be, don't get in pressure. I understood that there's an entire 
method here and to that um, you can switch or invert your bad forces into good and by this you organize for yourself a heaven on earth. Yes. Okay, now I understand. Each one of us can influence his life from bad to good if he knows how to use this. Yes. Okay, now I want to ask, are there people who are not me that could somehow influence my system of good, bad angels, good forces, bad forces? Are there people that are like in network sciences, you can identify inside, the, everyone is in the network 7 billion, but in the network, if you map it, there are like junctions that there the influence is stronger. Uh, power areas, yes, yes, there are people who have much more stronger forces in the system than his or yours or hers and so on. Uh, so what, where is it? It comes from nature. You're born with it, yes. Hitler, Stalin, especially, uh, we especially identify evil forces. Or there are those like, that are like fortune tellers in Russia, there are a few very well known such people. The less they, they interest me less. Can I raise myself to a level if I'll be also the center of force inside the network? It either comes from nature or doesn't. Doesn't matter. Yeah, but th these are these are uh, people through which the higher force, the power of light, operates the process, history. They themselves, they don't operate themselves. They even feel that they're operated. They even feel that they're operated. There are such people that have no free choice, but that's how it is. They go forward the way they're operated. But you can protect yourself from any bad thing by operating the good force in you. So you build a shield around you, and the more you do good to others, the more protected you are. Can I rely on that? A hundred percent. Meaning doesn't matter how much uh, bad things around me, they don't touch you, because you lift yourself to a degree of delighted and mercy. First of all, but I don't care about anything. The main thing is that I bestow onto everyone. I don't want to harm anyone. And that's it. By that, you build around yourself a fence. I just wanted to understand what really are these special forces that exist in that wisdom, the wisdom of Kabbalah. There are no forces there. The wisdom of Kabbalah is a wisdom that explains to a person how to correctly uh, behave in the current reality in order to reach heaven. And in the Kabbalah books, there are no special forces in the books themselves, in the, in the cover or between the pages. No, in the book, you know. No, I don't know. There are, there are beliefs that this book has powers. Suppose it says that the, the holy book of Zara has forces. Yes, because with the help of these books, I can learn how to be holy. Holy, it means to bestow. What is holy? What does it mean? To bestow. To bestow to others. That's called holiness. What does it mean to bestow to others? To give, to hand out, to love. To cause good. Are there people that th these books, you said that in the book there is something holy. The book teaches you how to be holy yourself. Ask you what does it mean to be a holy person? So to be in love towards others, to cause good to others. Could it be that another person will come, or a few other people, uh, they'll get together and they'll use the same books, suppose the Zohar, in order to do bad things in the world. Why am I asking? Because a few years ago, it was very popular, the Pulse of the new so-called, in translation, strike of light, that come people, and uh, I don't want to get into it, but uh, we saw that, that uh, there was uh, this, this ceremony of Pulsa de Nura, 
uh, people that resisted what the prime minister back then, Itzhak Rabin, did, and they made the ceremony, and he was shot eventually. So how do you explain this? How do you explain that? If all the, the Kabbalah comes to teach a person, or, or maybe probably who, who did it, for him it's something, he, he's sure he did something good, but who can say what's good? These people did not study the wisdom of Kabbalah. They did not study the wisdom of Kabbalah, that's it. First of all, Pusad Nuwa, it's something completely... I don't want to talk about it at all. It's... Well, they did, so they did. No, I forget the people. I mean, when you can say that you can do Pulsa de Nova to someone, it, it's theater. Theater? Yeah, but psychologically it works. A person, a capitalist, that is, that rules his forces, he can never cause harm to someone else. <laughs> 